In this video today, we're going to generate a submission file and submit it to Kaggle, see what our results are like, and then look at if there's any improvement we can make. Let's take a look at what the sample submission file looks like again. So we want the gender ID and survived prediction made on the test set. We'll have to read in the test set first. Now do the same processing on the test set as we did in the training set. First, we'll have to fill in the age columns. We might just want to fill in the missing age values in the test set as the average in the training set because there's more samples in the training set. So it might be more representative of the population mean. Make sure you have the same names on the left side. And then on the right side, we just want the training data frames. Then we drop three columns that we're not using at the moment. Drop these on the test data frame. Then change the string representation of sex into ones and zeros. After that, get dummies on the test set. I made a mistake here where I set the test DF into the get dummies version of the training data frame. The actual test DF is lost at this point, so I have to go back to the line where I read in the CSV and run the pre processing again. Look at what our test set looks like right now. And compare it to the training set. Oops, I just realized that the NAND values aren't filled. Okay, so we actually have to set this condition to sex equals 0 and sex equals 1 in this case because this feature in the training set has already been changed to numeric values. Read in the test data frame again. Now we should be able to see all the age columns filled. To make sure we don't have any NAN values, in order to check which columns have NAN values, so is na.any applied on the data frame is going to return true or false for every column. And if we pass in this condition into column selection, it's going to return us the name of the column with the name value. So there actually is someone in the test data frame without a fair entry. And because the shape of testdf.dropna there's only one less row than the actual test DF. We know there's only one passenger without the fare entry. Let's look at that passenger entry. Fare.isNA. So this passenger is in class 3. What we can do is fill in the missing value as an average of the class 3 passengers, which is essentially the same thing as when we filled in the missing values for the age column, except we assume the age distribution was more correlated with male or female, whereas fair is most probably correlated with P class. Locate test df such that fair is an A, and then fill the fair column as the average of every data point in the test data frame with p class 3. Fair dot me. Now there wouldn't be any missing values in the test data frame. And we can validate that by drop na. Check the number of rows and make sure that matches the number of rows before we drop na. At this point, we can pass the test data frame into the model we have filled. The classifier dot predict. We want to make sure that the data frame we pass into the predict method has the same columns in the same order as the data frame we trained on. Let's go back to training time. Notice that we dropped the passenger ID and survived column. So we're going to do the same for the test set, except we won't have the survived column this time. This is the list of predictions the model gives. The order of these predictions are going to be the same as the order of which each point appears in the canvas data frame we passed in. That means the first entry is going to map to the passenger ID 892, and the second 893, and so on. Then in order to generate a submission file like this, we will want passenger ID on one column and survive on the other column. 
To do that, we can create another column called survived in the test data frame and set it to the production values, which is this array. Now to look at only two columns in the test data frame, we can select the columns by passing them in as a list. And there we have our predictions. To be able to submit this to Kaggle, we'll need to save this as a CSV file dot to CSV. Call it submission dot CSV. Let's see what would happen if index is equal to true. If we read in the CSV again, submission, it's going to have this one extra column unnamed, and that's not in the sample file format. If we set this to false, we won't have that problem. Now that we have the submission file in our directory, go to Kaggle. In the kernel where you downloaded your data from, there's a Submit Predictions tab. Upload the file, and then make submission. After this point, for some reasons, my mouth sounded like it was hosting a hot potato, so I'm just going to summarize what happened. We got accuracy of around 76%, and our rankings could definitely use some push. So let's go back and look at what might we improve. I promised I was planning to do the submission improvements all in the same video, but this took a bit longer to explain, so I'm going to leave the rest to the next video. Please stay tuned and have a great day.